Now, Sunriders, you are in for yet another special treat. Today's guest speaker is a best-selling author and the world's leading digital persuasion expert, as she has worked for global brands like the Academy Awards, Disney, and the U.S. Navy. And starting right now, she's bringing her enthusiasm and expertise to Sunrider. Please take a look at this. Go, go, go. All right, everyone, let's give a warm welcome to Aaron Keen. <laughs> You can tell I got big, big energy. How's it going, guys? Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy 40th. Anyone else rocking their boots in Dallas? Any boots? Yeah. OK, have you noticed this? When the boots went on, the y'alls came out. Oh, I have dropped more y'all bombs in the last 12 hours. So if I say one to you, when in Dallas, right? Let's do this. So Sunrider fam, let me ask you a question. When you are typing, texting, tweeting, TikToking, Facebooking, living, you are showing up and sharing your incredible Sunrider story with the world. How persuasive would you say that you are? Does the way that you show up persuade the human being on the other side of this screen to stop their scroll, lean forward, and say those three magical words? Tell me more. If you're not sure, good news. Over the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you can dramatically amp up your digital persuasion power. You'll be able to attract more attention, increase your influence and sell smarter from your very next message or meeting. Sunrider fam, good game plan, yeah? All right, let's do it. Before we do, it is so nice to meet all of you. My name is Erin King, and I truly believe that the best way to get to know someone is to look at the most important people in their lives. So if you don't mind, I would love to introduce you to my three favorite people, starting at the top, being the most respectful, the head of our household. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Miss Betty White. Do you need dog mamas, dog papas in the house? Yeah? For parents, okay. So not to get political, but do dogs belong in bed with humans? Yes or yes? Correct, good answer. All right, good, we're good so far. Uh, number two, uh, should dogs be allowed to kiss their owners disgustingly on the mouth? Yes or yes? Okay, mixed bag, that's okay, there it is. You can see the tongue really coming in hot there, Betty White. So up next, I would love for you to meet the person who thinks they are the head of our household. Sunrider, please meet my husband, Mr. Hartman King, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Hartman King, Hartman is his middle name. He goes by it as his first name. It sounds like the last name, whatever. In the right light, he looks like Bradley Cooper and I'm here for it, okay? So, and finally, I would love for you to meet the woman that has had the biggest influence on my life. Guys, please meet Nana. Nana, thank you. No one ever claps for Nana. That is so nice of you. I can't wait to tell her. She is 78 and sassier than ever. She came over here on a boat from Ireland when she was 18 years old by herself. She's a wild card and she is my hero. So our whole lives growing up, I don't know if you had a grandmother figure in your life who would tell you a piece of advice. But just to give you an idea of what my life was like, 
with our 36 first cousins, yeah, count them, uh, she would always say that when life gets tough, it is best to just trust in the power of the Holy Trinity. And by Holy Trinity, she was referring to the power of God, the power of gratitude, and the power of a little bit of Guinness. So that's how I grew up. So that's my family. Now, so nice to meet all of you. You know my people. But now, let's talk a little bit about our people. We have all types of countries, all walks of life here at this beautiful event for Sunrider. And yet there is a 100% chance that you and I have some of the exact same friends on social media. Mm -hmm. Let's find out by a round of applause. Does anyone know the guy who's in your newsfeed? We're going to call him Bob. Bob's the guy. He only flies first class. He always picks the winning team. He's a vegan who volunteers. Bob, Bob's always hashtag blessed. Oh, you're friends with Bob. Okay, round of applause there. Uh, anyone friends with always on vacation, Vicky? Anyone with her impromptu giraffe breakfast? Okay, yes, you are. And my personal favorite, maybe your friends with just went to the gym, Jim. Okay, a lot of gym friends in the house. Okay, and finally, perhaps you are friends with Deb. Mm, yeah. Deb's the gal who shows up in your emails, your DMs. God love her. She's got a lot to say. She sends you the great multi scroller wall of text, right? Not an emoji in sight, just paragraph after paragraph. DM Deb. Guys, do we know some of the same human beings? Yes or yes? We do. And here's the thing, like we're not getting down on Deb and the team because we're all doing our best. This is a wild world of Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Maybe you're on it. Maybe you're not. But you know for sure that you can't ignore it. And you know that when you harness this in a way that allows you to get out beyond your existing sphere of influence, you know that everything you are chasing down for this year, from now until Christmas, the goals, the dreams, the aspirations that you have set for yourself, that you are ready to achieve. You know that this, love it or hate it, can help you get there. And yet there's nothing more frustrating than if you actually put yourself out there. You take 100 pictures, you delete 99, right? You triple filter, there's the skinny arm, there's so much happening. And then maybe you don't get the response you're looking for. You don't get the likes or the shares. But regardless, we're not doing this for our ego. We're not trying to be Kardashians. We're doing it because we know it has the power to get out beyond our same 50 to 100 people that are going to love your Sunrider story no matter what you share. We want to figure out how to attract new people, new interests, new individuals so you can show them how they can change their life with this company in the way that has changed yours, yes? Okay. So here's the reason we aren't very good at social media and digital communication, okay? It turns out that if you average Facebook and iPhones together, you get about 14 years old. Does anyone remember being a freshman in high school? Oh, it was awkward. It was fake it till you make it. It was looking for the cool kids to see what to do, which is a terrible idea. I mean, I don't know about you, but it wasn't exactly my best time. So if you feel any of those feelings, when you're thinking about using social and digital to grow your Sunrider business and share your story, that's why. So give yourself some grace. It's only freshmen in high school old in the grand scheme of human communication. Now, speaking of freshmen in high school, before all these influencers, you know, with their billions of followers, the Kardashians, all this, before all this, as a kid growing up in the 90s, our influencers were a little different. Our influencers were the kids from Saved by the Bell. Any fans in the room? Okay, Saved by the Bell, yes. So most girls wanted to be the pretty popular cheerleader who? Kelly Kapowski. I was super weird. I wanted to be the bossy, brainy Jesse Spano, which just so happened to have a super sweet 90s perm. Okay. Now, I knew in order to be like my idol, Jesse Spano, 
I too need to get said sweet 90s perm. However, there's just one problem. My mom was way ahead of the whole foods, whole paycheck phenomenon, the organic movement. She was way ahead of her time. And she was like, babe, um, don't, don't like get upset, but uh, your grades are not like amazing. So I would rather we didn't put perm chemicals that close to the brain cells. Um, we don't need extra risk factors at this point. Let's just keep a play it safe. So we fight over this perm for months, you guys. And my career as a persuasion expert was actually born the day that I persuaded my mother to agree to a compromise. I would not be allowed to perm the hair on my head, which would stay stick straight on both sides of my face. But I would, however, be allowed to perm just my bangs. Hmm, thank you. Uh, obviously, the hair is viscerally upsetting on multiple levels. Um, some people have suggested that I was the inspiration behind the movie Joe Dirt, so there's that. Uh, so what my introduction did not share with all of you is I'm also the inventor of the perm mullet, which is part perm, part mullet, kind of coming together. Now, what my perm mullet really has brought to mind lately is that a lot of us are in a bit of a perm mullet pickle ourselves. Some of us are very comfortable on social media. Some of us would rather just have a conversation. Some of us huh, would rather talk on the phone. Let me tell you the story of the landline, right? It's a very fragmented world between how maybe certain generations like to communicate, certain, certain personalities like to communicate. And so this permullet of digital and real life has created some tension that can feel a little bit awkward. But it turns out, I want you to understand sort of why there is this block for a lot of us when it comes to this space. It's not because we hate technology or we're bad people. It turns out it's actually science. Okay, psychologists call the way that we show up behind the screen, the online disinhibition effect. That is a very long phrase. We're going to call it the ode mode. Okay, the ode mode is the scientific reason that you see people online. Maybe you get an email from someone and you're like, huh, they sound upset, right? Or you get that text message that comes through and you're like, that's not how I remember them feeling towards me. We have this miscommunication online. It's because screens scramble our empathy. They scramble our empathy. They lower our humanity. They take everything about you that makes you so great at this event here at Sunrider in Dallas, and it dulls it. There's no nonverbal communication. There's a delay between your message and their response. All these things come together. And so you're not going to be surprised to know, my friend, that a study came out right before the pandemic that found that not only are we obviously way more persuasive and influential at an event like this face to face, and when we can actually share our story in person, but we are 34 times more persuasive in person than we are behind screens. Yeah, give it up for that. And yet, screens aren't going anywhere. So basically, there is this Grand Canyon size gap between online you and offline you. But I don't see a gap, friends. I see a Grand Canyon sized opportunity. So let's start to close that gap and begin to unlock what makes you so good right here so that it shows up a little more powerfully here, OK? So here's where we're going to start. If you have an idea to the answer to this, please call it out nice and loud. If you had to guess, what would you say is the most persuasive, sorry, the least persuasive word? The word that makes you want to say yes the least in all languages, also the most used. Nice and loud. Anyone have a guess? What is it? Trust me, that's pretty good. Anyone else? Any other guesses? The least persuasive word that's most used. Anyone? Buy now, sale, you, anyone else? Okay, the least persuasive word in all languages, also the most used, is the word I. I, and it's 
cousins, me, we, and our. And so here's why you're so much better in real life. In real life, you only use the word I less than half the time, 40% of the time. You get the conversation ball back and forth. It's like my favorite movie, Bridesmaids, okay? You score some points, people get hit sometimes, things go out of bounds, but the conversation keeps moving. And how have you been? Okay, and then you, we go back and forth. We're not so focused on ourselves. We're having a two-way dialogue. Now, I want you to imagine we're on the tennis court. Here is the screen, this net, and the net comes up and becomes a screen that is blocking you from your customer, your prospect, your team. Now, what percent of the time would you guess you are using the least persuasive word? Any guess is nice and loud. Let me hear. 80%. Yes, ma'am, in the red. Perfect guess. 80% of the time. So we are essentially typing like we're in selfie mode. Like it's all about us, right? And no one's judging if you're taking a selfie, unless you're using an extremely large selfie stick, <laughs> in which case we're all judging a little bit. But do me a favor on that note. I want to prove a point to you so you can really understand how this can help change your business. Pull out your phone for me. And I'd love for you to flip it into selfie mode. We're going to bring up the house lights. And I'd love for you to grab a friend, grab a buddy. And if you're comfortable, take your best selfie with your friend, having a good time here. And when you're finished, hold up your phone so I know you're finished. We can move to what this means for your journey online. Okay? I want duck faces, do lander. Let's get a beat here, guys. A little DJ music. We can bring that up a little bit. Really pump it up. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Don't be shy. Let's get some selfies. Woo! Yeah, looking good, girl. Don't be too cool. Don't be too cool. Come on. Find a friend. Oh, yeah. just happened in this room? Did you feel the energy come up? Did you feel yourself think, you know what, honestly, like not too bad for the old pandemic, right? Like not too shabby. The truth that you know to be true because you are here as a phenomenal communicator, a dynamic salesperson, a vibrant individual. The truth that you and I both know to be true is that when it comes to persuasion, Persuasion is personal. Persuasion is so personal. And unless your customer, your team, your leaders, whoever you're trying to get that blessed yes from, unless they can see themselves in focus, in the selfie, they're not persuaded to care. And so the simplest switch you can make, I'm not going to give you 35,000 social media tips because you can find those on Google or YouTube. What I'm going to tell you is that the simplest switch you can make when you stand up and walk out of here is this. In order to get more yes for your business online, all you have to do is remember to type more like you talk. To type more like you talk. When you type more like you talk, you begin to show up as the person you already are. Now, I'll tell you this. I ran a social media agency for the last 15 years. We were one of the most original in the space. We were acquired this past January. And what I learned from working with the world's biggest brands is that there were three key elements. that when we use them in a certain order, every single time, it would dramatically increase our chances of getting a yes. And this became what I call the pub method. It's very simple. It will change your life. And I'm going to teach you right now. Okay. So I'd speak quickly, as you can tell. So if you don't want to be taking notes frantically, you can text the word pub to the number 66866. You will get a 13 page cheat sheet with all of today's notes, 
prompts for your team, reminders of how to do it, and examples to help your very next email message or meeting be more powerful and influential. Now, if you are not in the U.S. and you go to the URL pub.aaronking.com right here in the bottom left corner, you will see that you can get your cheat sheet there. You can open it up and then you can have it right there for your next message, okay? So it's pub to 66866. All right, let's do some work, friends. The pub method. The pub method is very simple. You simply ask yourself, am I starting this meeting, this message, this moment, this opportunity with something truly personal to my recipient so they can see themselves in the selfie? From there, you're going to ask yourself, is what I'm talking about right now, the way I'm telling my story, offering the product, am I being truly, legitimately useful? And finally, you're going to ask yourself, am I keeping it brief? Am I getting to the point? Personal, useful, brief. Now, here's my example. This is one of my very dearest friends. Her name is Ashley, but I call her Sarge, short for sergeant, because she's short and she's bossy, and she stomps around, and she's always on a mission, and I love her for it. So maybe you know a Sarge, and if not, bad news, you probably are the Sarge. We love you either way, okay? So Sarge started a network marketing business 10 years ago, very similar model to what you all do, and she promptly began to, what's the right word that's appropriate? Strongly anger a lot of friends and family, including my mom who loved Sarge, but stopped following her on the Facebook. So one day she was so upset and I was like, Sarge, let me see if what I'm doing to these corporate clients, these Fortune 100 businesses, I don't know much about network marketing, but maybe it'll work for you. So I said, show me what you're sharing online. She goes, okay, this is what I'm sharing. Now I want you to read this post and tell me if it looks familiar to you at all, okay? Right here, okay. Sappy post alert. When I decided to walk away from my corporate career and become an ambassador for a health and wellness company, I didn't know what I was doing. What I did have was a desire for more, a feeling in my gut that I found something that could truly change the course of my life. Blah, blah, blah. Time with my family, flexibility with my schedule, freedom from financial stress. And this is a lovely, heartfelt post, but raise your hand if you have seen this post, yes or yes. Now, are you particularly compelled to hear the rest of Sarge's story? She's not your best friend. Are you stopping the scroll, yes or no? Probably not. Now, why are you not, why is your brain not saying, tell me more, Sarge, why? Look at this message, knowing what you just learned. Can you see anything wrong with this post? Yes, ma'am, it is a landmine of I-bombs and my bombs, a landmine. I-bomb, my bomb, I-bomb, my bomb. I am not, this is not about me, right? So our brains are saying, hey, I'm not in a selfie and I'm busy, so next. So what we did was we rewrote the open to be personal to her audience. Have you ever thought you had life perfectly planned out, but then something unexpected threw you off your path? Not sure if that resonates for anyone in the last, I don't know, 200 years of our life, right? But maybe a thing or two. Personal. We want to max the first 10 words. From there, I said, let's make it a little more useful. A lot of times what we'll do is we will put a post up and it'll be a post that tells our audience what they already know. Here we are in Dallas at a conference having fun. Well, I guess that from the photo, right? Uh, here we are at an award trip and you're not, uh-huh, saw that too from the, from the photo, right? So what's really useful is not more perfection of the perfect mom and the perfect daughter on the fake perfect internet. We're so tired of feeling less than compared to these perfect individuals. That's not useful. What is useful is for you to show them what they can't. I'm just trying to go back one, you guys. Get right there. Let's get right there. To show them what they can't see from the image alone. You show, you visually, you type them verbally. What can't they see from your awards trip? How did you get there? What specifically happened? Why does this product that I can see you obviously love, why? Why does it matter to you? Did something happen in your family that made you compelled? What can't we Google? What is your unique perspective that only you have 
that we need that is useful for us to see. And so for Sarge, I went and looked at her post and, and her story was that, you know, she'd been working in corporate America and she was dating this guy, Dave, really was sure he was the one, wanted to have a family with him someday, but Sarge always has the plan, right? She has the perfect timeline. So she was brave and vulnerable enough to share the real reason behind this perfect mother photo of why she took the jump, why she joined this network marketing company. She was super brave and she just told us the truth. There you are at the height of your corporate career. When you find out that you are accidentally pregnant before you were planning on it, imagine being terrified, imagine not knowing what to do or where to turn or how you would do it all. Now, to understand that this is not a, a, a classic perfect mother-daughter story is going to help someone else who is going through an unplanned time or someone who knows someone to say, wow, that's really useful. I feel seen. I feel connected. I'm not alone. I'm not alone is a lot more useful what we can't see from this photo than another perfect mother-daughter moment. Okay. So then we rewrote the caption to be brief. Now, I will tell you, as salespeople, brief is not necessarily our best attribute. It's really hard for us as my mother-in-law from Birmingham, Alabama. She always tells me, I tell very long stories, epic storytellers are in my family, epic meaning literally long Irish storytellers. She's from the South. They're actually epic storytellers, right amount of detail. They got the boots, they got the accent, it works. Okay, so I'm telling a story with my future in-laws. They don't know it yet, but I did because I was like, this guy's a babe. I need to lock him down immediately. Okay. So I'm telling the story and I'm going on and she, my husband starts going like this and he's going like this. And I'm like, I don't understand. He's going like this. Right. And I'm like, oh. so my future mother-in-law, Mrs. Charlotte Macaulay King of the Birmingham Kings, she looks at him and she goes, oh, bless your heart, darling. He is telling you, you got to land the plane land the plane, bring it home, wrap it up. You're losing us, okay? We got to land the plane. You know who doesn't land the plane? Deb doesn't land. We don't want to be like Deb. So the easiest way to land the plane, if you find yourself like chapter seven of this group text, right, is to remind yourself the fastest way to land the plane is to ask yourself A or B. A or B, ask your audience A or B. So here's what we said for Sarge. I decided to chase down my dreams with a grateful heart. I chose faith over fear. Which are you choosing? Faith or fear? Faith or fear? Faith or fear? Faith or fear? Faith. So we reposted this personal, useful, brief caption. This was her original message. Just look at the likes. Same image, we reposted it. Sure, there's a lot that goes in to social media. The timing, the hashtags, the trending, is Mercury retrograde? It's a whole thing, but we posted the same image with this personal, useful, brief caption. I want you to see if you can notice the difference to how the world responded to her. 10 times the engagement. Now, we're not doing this for more likes and followers. We're doing this to grow our business. So Sarge, 10 years later, she is now at the very top of her company. She has a thousand women in her downline. Her and Dave are happily married with not one, but two beautiful babies. She looks and feels amazing. And guys, honestly, the best news, my mom is following her on Facebook again. So personal, useful, brief. You want to ask yourself, how can I do all these three? Every time you're trying to get a yes, and you can't do it halfway because we have seen friends what happens when we do anything just halfway, okay? We got to go full perm. So if you're ready to go full perm, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your selfie after our time together. And I want you to practice. Practice your newfound pub power by sharing your selfie with an eye free caption. Just start with the first step. Just post it, tag me, and here's what's on the line. We have not one, not two, but three free passes we're going to give away in the next hour to the three most creative captions with your selfie. You will have access to my social media spa, which is my deep dive online learning experience. So 
upload your selfie, tag me anywhere on social media. And here is a little cheat sheet for you right here. Here's three ways that you could start your selfie contest. Okay, makes sense. We're going full perm. Going full perm, yes or yes? Yes. Okay. Now, speaking of selfies, okay. Uh, before Chris Rock and um, who was the guy's name, Chris and Will Smith, what was the guy's name? Kind of big star. Will Smith and Chris Rock had a little altercation at the Oscars. If you're in the U.S., you know what I'm talking about. It was all over social media. Now, before that happened, the actual most famous moment at the Oscars was this selfie. Does anyone remember the selfie by chance? Yeah? Yes, you do. So a bunch of celebrities got together and they broke the internet. What you can't see from this photo, just a few months prior, six months prior, I was sitting at my kitchen table, this old, cold, hardwood table, and I was crying my eyes out. I couldn't pay a $100 cell phone bill after starting not one, but two expensive, exhausting companies that had completely failed. See, my dad worked in corporate for 40 years. No shame in that game, but he always seemed to me to not be living life on his terms. And I didn't see him being this joyful person. It wasn't the story I wanted for me. So I was determined to prove to myself I could do this. After two failures, I'm at my kitchen table. This is my last shot. I have one small client with a very small budget and champagne tastes, okay? And I am working 60 hours a week, working like a dog, and all of a sudden I can't pay this one little bill. And have you ever had a moment happen where it was something so little, so simple, and it just sends you into this shame spiral where you see yourself 30,000 foot up looking down like, what are you doing? And in that moment, I didn't know which road I was supposed to take. Like it's that moment that you may have had yourself in the last two years. Over here, you have that it. it's a sign from the universe. This is your sign that you don't have what it takes and it's time to fail fast and move on. And at this road over here is the moment in every Oscar winning movie where it's darkest before the dawn, where it's getting up one last time where the hero achieves their breakthrough. Now, if you've seen those two roads, you know it's very glamorous and easy to say, well, of course, but you know in reality, it's not that easy. So I didn't know what to do. So I did what I think everyone should do when they're at a crossroads. I took a shower. Tell me right now, you guys, you do not have the best ideas ever in the shower. I'm not wrong. That you, The ideas come to you. Yes, you get clean, you get clear. Exfoliations equal epiphanies. That is also science. Okay. So the stars will align is what came to me in the shower. I'm like, I love a good California woo-woo, but the stars ain't paying AT&T. But whatever, I was desperate. So I am sending all these messages, getting rejected. The stars will align. The stars will align. And I'm trying to find that big client that can achieve the breakthrough. Well, no one answered until one pub message led to a meeting, which led to me crying at that same cold, hard wood table for a different reason. I was crying because I was crying into a contract our first very big client to run social media for the world's largest event, the Oscars. Thank you. And on the red carpet with the headset and the clipboard, hired all my friends, we worked our butts off, we rocked it. This selfie goes viral in the middle of our very first big opportunity. And all of a sudden I realized, God has a funny sense of humor because the stars had literally aligned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This one selfie changed the course of my business. And more so than anything else, I was able to pay the cell phone bill and a lot more than that. But it was, I, I realized I didn't have what it took. And I believed in myself again. And so I'm telling you this, not to be Bragasaurus Bob, but because this is what is possible for you when you remember that the messages you are sending, the meetings you are having, these moments, they're not just messages. These messages you create and send and show up as, they are your moment makers. And any message at any moment could make your Oscar opportunity. So Sunrider friends, do me a favor. If you're into this, I want you to put your phones down for a second. Put your feet flat on the floor. 
and just sit up nice and tall. And guys, if you can just give us a little bit of music, I, I want us to think very clearly about what we want to accomplish in the next two months, three months, by Christmas. Roll your shoulders up and down out of your ears. I want you to close your eyes if you're comfortable. And I want you to take a big, deep inhale in through your nose. Inhaling the future that you so deserve. I want you to exhale the past that you cannot change. I want you to imagine your big moment. It could be a goal. It could be a relationship. It could be a finish line. It could be a feeling. Imagine this most vibrant version of you. Imagine this most vibrant version of you walking towards the joy in your life that it is time for you to experience. I want you to look back over one of your shoulders in your mind. I want you to see the obstacle that you released. Maybe it was a habit that you know is no longer serving you, a relationship that's not giving you the energy you need. Maybe it's just an untrue narrative or belief that someone placed in your mind as a child that you know it is time to close the door on. Look over your other shoulder behind you. I want you to see that one small step that one tiny action, you started the thing, you quit the thing, you moved towards the thing, you did the thing that felt a tiny bit scary, but that it wouldn't leave you alone as you answered its call for your destiny. I want you to look ahead again, and I want you to receive, receive the joy and the gratitude and the pride, feel that sense of ownership, that sense of accomplishment because you did it. You did it. Open your eyes, friends. There's so much we cannot control in this crazy world right now. But what you can control is how you choose to show up. When your fingers touch a keyboard, you can close that gap between online you and offline you. You can be personal, useful, brief. You can be more of this amazing, fantastic, influential, persuasive human that you are in real life here to grow towards what you deserve your Oscar moment. And I do have a warning for you. These tools are road tested and powerful and you will see the momentum that you crave begin to unfold when that happens, watch out. Because sadly, People want you to be a success sometimes until you are a success. Then you might make it a little uncomfortable because you're a reminder that the excuses that they have, you overcame those. They want you to play smaller. And when they do, they might ignore you, be unkind. And that is the fastest thing that can stop your momentum trajectory. So when that happens, friends, I want you to remember what Nana would always tell me, that when the haters come out, and people are trying to stop you from living the fullest expression of who you were born on this earth to be. I want you to remember what she'd always tell me. She would say, love, it is better to be someone shot of whiskey than everyone's cup of tea. And so with that, my name is Erin King. I wish you all the success online, offline, all the time. I deeply want this moment maker for you, not someday, but today. And Sunrider friends, happy birthday. I cannot wait to see how your stars align. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.